known to pack a punch. Find out just how bad that punch but is. But this picture to a friend who's a nurse, she said the insect responsible was a puss caterpillar. It might look lovely and cute, but you'll want to keep your distance. They're called puss caterpillars. So I Googled it, and then of course I started freaking out more because it says like most poisonous caterpillar in the United States. She rushed Cannon to the hospital. Often found near oak and citrus trees and mostly active in the spring and fall. There can be only one. Google says the most venomous caterpillar in North America is the pus caterpillar. It may only be an inch long, but you should still be sure to stay away from pus caterpillars in Florida. These small insects are one of the country's most venomous creatures. Caterpillars already can be some of the most intimidating creatures in the world. Many of them have spines. I mean, it helps when you're a squishy creature. Many have urticating hairs or irritants that help to track predators. But in Florida, there's at least four that, well, you'll I'm see. I'm Alex, I'm the host of The Great Outdoors. Today, I want to show everyone a really beautiful species of caterpillars. Species of caterpillars. Now this little caterpillar is known as the saddle caterpillar. It is one of four commonly found species of caterpillars here in Florida that sting the low moth caterpillar, the dagger moth caterpillar, the saddle caterpillar, and also the pus caterpillar, which is probably potentially the most painful and sting caterpillar species. I'm Alex, the Florida Wildlife Guy. Today I have what is known as the most venomous caterpillar here in Florida and one of the most venomous caterpillars in North America. This is commonly known as the pus caterpillar or the puss caterpillar. It's uh, nicknamed that because it resembles a fuzzy pussy cat, but this is not to be tangled with as it is packing a pretty potent sting. It not only has urticating hairs, those fuzzy bits on top, but it has spines or quills down the region of its back. Those quills are said to deliver an intense burning sensation and uh, the sensation is rumored to last at least an hour. But uh, essentially what I want to do today is just test the sting of the urticating hairs and push down a good bit and see how those spines feel because I just don't know what I'm getting into. And I've seen some pretty horrific pictures which I'll post right here on the screen so you can see what some of the after effects are. And I'll receive a sting right here on my forearm. Let's go ahead and push down. Now these this one's feeding on a live oak leaf. Get a good view on that. And we're gonna push down with the urticating hairs first. Oh yeah. My content is not made for kids and don't try this shit at home. But this caterpillar right here, it's known to pack a punch. That's what it's known for. It's not questionable whether it packs a punch. And today we're gonna to find out just how bad that punch is and how long the duration of the sting is and the effects of the healing process. Now I'm sure that it all depends on the victim, the severity of the sting, and stuff like that. But for me, I'm just curious. So let's just try it out. I was always told if you're not having fun, don't do it. So here we go, let's have some fun. That right there is just the urticating hairs. And I'm going across the grain right there. So that'll be that area. And then these are gonna be the quills uh, right here. And this is the intimidating part. I'm pushing down pretty good actually. If you look. Okay, I can feel, oh, oh. Yeah, that had a delay, but oh yeah, it's burning pretty good now. This one is burning pretty good. Uh, this area, you can actually see the urticating hairs in that area, but uh, while that sting intensifies, because I can feel it intensifying, Let's get this one let go, and I'm going to release it back onto a live oak, which is a suitable host for this caterpillar species. So, my goal is to shed a little light on these creatures and not create any kind of fear in these creatures because these creatures are truly important. Now, it doesn't look like anything but a fuzzball. But, how could that be the full story? What is the pus caterpillar story? What does it turn into? You remember the 70s? Flannel jackets, well, it turns into the southern flannel moth, a moth that resembles the pus caterpillar itself and is wearing a flannel jacket. If you want a little more information on moths, you should watch my last video I did about the hickory horn devil. I cover some really cool topics in that video. It's amazing how the largest moth caterpillar in the world is harmless, and yet one that's only an inch long is one of the most venomous caterpillars in North America. 
It's like that old saying. It's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's so, the size of the fight in the dog. I can definitely feel that burn. Uh, it'll slowly inch its way back up to the canopy. There's some low hanging oak limbs on it, so he'll be able to get some food pretty soon. That's a pretty, uh, it feels like somebody just dumped some hot boiling grease on your arm is what that feels like. But uh, the uh, sting site is actually not evident yet, but it will be here in just a few minutes. I can it. So, five minutes we'll later, you can minutes. see where yeah. five quills had stabbed deeply into my arm and injected venom. The eradicating hairs had left slight redness, but no whelps. Fifteen minutes later, those five whelps turned into three lines. And this is four hours later, and there's some minor whelps right here on my arm. And when I run my finger across, it's like there's some kind of a liquid. It's sticky right there. Where I rub my finger across, it's like excreting venom. No, I don't know about venom, but some kind of a, it's sticky to the touch. So it's kind of weird. My body's exuding some kind of a liquid. 